Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I know you're very, very busy with the work that you're doing, but we have some two important guests here today. We have Dr. Hani Albanna, founder of Islamic Relief. I'm sure many of you know him. And also we have a very important, also another very important guest, a friend of Islamic Relief for many, many years, His Excellency Ambassador Atar Almanan al bakhid So Jazakallah Khair, so uh, for taking time out. And uh, if we can, um, over to you, Dr. Hani, if you can perhaps give us a, um, a talk, please. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, wa sallam wa rasulullah. I'm uh, very happy to be with all of you today, since yesterday, to share with you your feeling, your vision, your motivation, your dedication, your commitment to help the victims of this uh, enormous disaster which is affecting our brothers and sisters in Turkey and in South Syria. It's a disaster which hit all of us with sorrow, with agony, with regret, because we cannot deal with it. Even governments with S at the end cannot deal with all of it. We don't know how many people are affected. There's some saying over 15 million, some saying that up to 30 million. Yesterday, the number of dead were over 20,000 people, which I don't think is the right number. 3,000 plus inside Syria, I don't think it's the right number. Because it might grow, because there's no facility inside Syria to give us exactly the number, the exact number of the victims, or the shaheed, call them shuhada. All those 20,000 plus are shuhada, inshallah. And we ask Allah to uh, support their family, to grant them heaven and give them the highest heaven in Firdaus al-A'la, inshallah. I'm very proud of you because before I came here, I knew that a lot of you did not have any time to rest. No Saturday, no Sunday, Saturday coming tomorrow. Sunday coming after tomorrow. Every day you are here till about 6, 7, 8 in the evening. Sometimes he will call you from home. I know that. I know Salah and uh, what was, was, was uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Magdi. Magdi. Magdi were in the airport for hours mm -hmm. to travel from uh, Sabiha to, uh, to uh, Urfa. And from Urfa to go to uh, uh, a big, big journey. The brothers who went yesterday or the first day of the, uh, what's his name, the Libyan uh, brother? Saqib and uh, Abdul um, Sa Hamid. Saqib and Hamid also as well. And people inside, like Abdul Rahman, who was there in Ghazi Antab, now he was talking to us from Syria. And those people not only spending their time investing their time and supporting people, but actually risking their life. People like Brother Muhammad discovered that he lost his cousin, his cousin's wife, and his children. He discovered this today. Many people are living in tents. Many people are, of course, sleeping in cars for the last few days. So we have to stand up. I'm going to stand up with your permission. We have to stand up and respect, dignity, and the honor for any and every relief worker who came here and was supporting and was helping and was thinking to help and have to stand up also for the people who are donating from the one pence, the one dollar, the one real, the one dirham, okay, the one lira to the people who are going to pay the millions and millions of lira. But stand up for them, because this is the time for all of us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, as the Prophet said, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ عِبَادًا إِخْتَصَّهُمْ بِقَضَاءَ حَوَائِجِ النَّاسِ حَبَّبَهُمْ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَحَبَّبَ الْخَيْرِ إِلَيْهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ الْآمِنُونَ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah has chosen certain people. It's you. Prophet was talking about you. Talking about whom? About you. 
Habbaba Omer al Khair. Led them to love the act of goodness. Habbaba al Khair ilayhim. And led the act of goodness to be loved or to love them. Yani, you love to do good. Okay? And this is a good. The good itself will love to be with you. So Allah will push the action of goodness towards you. He'll put it in front of you. In front of you. You see, His Excellency the Ambassador was just coming to see me. But Allah has chosen him to come and share his wisdom with you today. It's a plan from Allah before he was born. It was written that today, on the 10th of February, he is coming to visit us here in Islamic Leaf, and Allah will let him to share his vast experience with you. Because Allah loves you, he brought him to you. Allah loves me, he brought me to you. Allah loves you, he brought you together. So this is a time that we trust one another. This is a time that we help one another. This is a time that we support one another because this is a time where the gates of heaven is open widely for you. The blessing of Allah will be showered upon you on earth and the blessings of Allah will be showered upon you when you go to see your palace. How many palaces will have in heaven? Many? So fight me, huh? You know, it is built one stone, one stone of gold, one stone of silver. You can imagine, your palace in heaven, your palace in heaven, and the brother, what's his name? Max. Huh? Enter. Max. 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 Okay. Your palace in heaven will be made of one one stone, one stone made out of silver, and one stone made out of of gold, and you will have a very beautiful children, very beautiful husband, not me. <laughs> Very beautiful wife as well, inshallah. You see, because Allah, the Prophet said, in Allah has chosen you. He chosen you a long time ago, before even your mother and the father met to get married. Threatened them. Today is Friday. We ask everyone with us and everyone who is listening to us to make dua. Because Friday, there's an hour where Allah will respond to your dua. Where Allah will accept your dua. Where Allah let the angels in heaven and earth to say Ameen on your dua. You know how many angels are sitting here in this room surrounding His Excellency Muhammad and you and you and you? Thousands of angels. Because in Allah, Allah has this wandering, flying angels. They go from one place to another place. To another. Look for what? For people who love Allah. For people who care for the cause of Allah. For people who listen to the teaching of the prophets of Allah. For people who support the victims and the needy and the orphans and the widows and the displaced and the refugees. And they will come here and say, Oh my God, Allah, I've seen those people in this room. How many of them? You see, look at this roof there. Have you seen them? Plenty. Watching and waving. Waving. Can you see? He's waving at you. You, you see how some? That's it. You, you can't see him. No. I see him. <laughs> I see the engine because it's a fact. Allah said yes, so it is yes. I'll tell you this. Allah raised the skies with an unseen pillars. So this sky, can you see the pillar? You can't see it. Because Allah said, there's a pillar, but you cannot see it. And you can imagine how long and deep this pillar. From the depth of the seventh earth 
to the height of the seventh sky. With pillars that you cannot see. You cannot see the angel, but we see them. You cannot see the pillars as Allah said in the Quran, but He sees them. This is the magnificent power of the might of the mighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell me about any technology can put a pillar from the seventh of the earth, the, seventh, the depth of the seventh earth, to the height of the seventh sky. How many thousands and thousands of thousands of miles is this? He is the one who is showering his mercy upon all of you. He is the one who is looking at you and want to save you. He is the one who is coming to you before Fajr to wake you up to save you. Allah SWT. He is the one who is giving us whatever we want and whatever we don't want. And protecting us from anything dangerous. And protecting the future of our children. And protecting our community. And save his deen. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels hear Brother Muhammad. Muhammad. Omar. Huh? Muhammad. Muhammad Amra. Muhammad Amra. Allah is very beautiful. The beauty of Allah that He brought us today here. On this blessed hour of this blessed day. And He knows what we are going to say. And the angels are writing what you he, they can see. And they are framing you. With not multidimensional uh, Facebook like this one. But with the camera that actually has been given to them by Allah. We manufacture the camera. But Allah manufactured His own camera. His own camera, listen and film the intention of man. You can listen to your intention. So when you, what's your name, sister? Marwa. Marwa, when you? Shukran. 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 When you go to heaven, all of you, just sit down and you smell something you used to eat when you were on earth. And Allah bring it to you on the tables. What do you like to us? Roast chicken? Yes, Imam Bayoldi? You know Imam Bayoldi? Yes, yes. Yes, yes? Is your wife cooking it for you? Yes. The Imam Nafsu? Cooking the Imam or the Bayoldi? <laughs> no, no, it's... Uh, it Bazinjan. Bazinjan. Because that's why all the Turkish people love Bazinjan. Mm. Chicken. Lamb. All the Nimex are You want to go to Burak restaurant? You know Burak restaurant? Burak? Yeah. In the Lamar, yeah. Chief Burak. Chief Burak. Is she Turkish? Me too. She doesn't use social media, that's why. I So you have not seen the angels, you have not seen the pillar, and you don't know Barak. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> to know. <laughs> She's learning, <laughs> that's right. She's learning, huh? <laughs> so today, uh, just to conclude, today we are celebrating you. <laughs> if somebody make a rumor about your organization, about any organization, tell them we have no time for you. Don't waste our time. It's the time now to help to support and to save lives of people. Because there's a lot of lunatics in different parts of the world sitting doing nothing and trying to claim, to, to claim that these organizations are fake. Strong. Strong is strong. I'm very happy to be with you. I'm very proud, very honored, very motivated to be with you today, with all of you. And please, whoever listen and see us, on the Facebook today, help as much as you can any organization, any individual. The least you help is by dua. But Allah opened His gates on this blessed day of Friday to accept all your dua. Now we listen our, to our wisdom from our senior brother and the stars, His Excellency Ambassador Ata Al Mannan. بارك الله فيك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله 
Assalamu alaikum all of you. I'm very happy to be with you here today. And uh, I learned a lot from uh, our Ustaz, uh, Dr. Hani. I think it's time for work, not time for uh, to speak. But I have some, uh, I, will, I will be so brief, but I will speak uh, major issues that you may, you, you may take into consideration while dealing with this uh, huge disaster, really. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, to help all of us and to help all those who are really uh, affected. Uh, you know, there is a hadith saying, Sabaqa darhim alfu darhim. Maybe one darhim, one penny, one pound, maybe more worthy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than thousands. Because the person who gave that darhim is all that he have is all his power, is all what he wants really to give with the real niyyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he really did it sincerely. I say this hadith, don't minimize what you are doing to help in this disaster. You will be working on the ground, helping people. You will be working just core coordination. Maybe just uh, preparing uh, packages, people to take, maybe a driver, maybe anything. It is a shame. So don't minimize. Don't say that so as uh, to be uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be accepted, I have to be on the field. All of us are in the field. Those who are here in the field, those who just coordinate are in the field, and those who just speak to you are in the field also. So uh, don't minimize what you are doing and do it properly, do it with sincerity and do it for Allah, for the sake of those people who want to help. So this is one of the things, if we have it into consideration, we will know something important, that all what we are doing is a chain. Every one of us has really his role to play. Sometimes you find a very small uh, role you are playing, but if you didn't do it, all this process will stop. All this chain will stop. So please take this into consideration while you are doing your job. Do it perfectly. Do it professionally. Do it sincerely. And do it because you want to help. And all of us, inshallah, are recompensated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is, now we have to work as a, really, all of us have to work together. Not in one organization, even between organizations. A cooperation is a real worth real time for real cooperation between organizations because that's is huge no one can do it for himself so we have to help each other and to make this really very long chain together from here up to 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 uh, to, uh, to the areas affected and also with those who are going to donate and they are far away so let's make this long chain to work together to know that sometimes there is disasters that needs more, more work, more cooperation than others. Take the example of Ukraine. I think European Union has been giving, giving for years, everyone across the, 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 the globe. They gave Africa, they gave the America, Latin America, they gave, the, they gave the Asia. But now you can see the solidarity of Europeans working for Ukraine. Why? Because they feel that they are closer. This is Europe. When I ask someone, say, no, it's Europe. It's not the other way, you see. So this is the Muslim world. We have to take this into consideration. And this is why we have to do our utmost to work together. And every one of us is responsible until we work together to overcome this challenge, inshallah. May Allah accept our malas all. Jazakum Allah khair If any one of you would like to make any comment or to ask any questions while here, as your servant. I'm talking about myself. The pillar that you cannot see is holding the skies from the depths of the seventh earth. Got it? The angels whom you did not see behind you and they can see his wing on your head. Put your hand here. Put your hand here. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, ask any questions for me or for uh, Muhammad Afsar or for the, His Excellency Ambassador Atal Manna.
in Arabic, English, Urdu. He speaks English, he speaks French, he speaks Urdu, Sawahili. Turkish. Uh, Turkish is a high language. <laughs> I'm going to try to speak the Turkish language because it's the language of the power of, of the civilization, of the, of the sultans. <laughs> and we are, we are the common people. Yalla, bismillah. Don't be shy. Start. Another question, but I can just, um, I just want to thank you. Uh, this is very important for us. Maybe here yesterday when I see you, uh, I was very, I got emotional actually. Um, with uh, support from, um, from, a, from the person who initiated the whole, um, the activity uh, 40 years ago. And now, today, we, are, we have been working worldwide. Um, against this, you know, very huge, unprecedented, enormous uh, case. So it is, it is a great pleasure for, for us uh, to have you here uh, with your experience. It's very valuable for us. And uh, we still ask your, uh, firstly, for dua. Inshallah, all of us. <laughs> uh, and for your uh, support in any case. Thank you very much again. Inshallah. Any other question? Brother Amr, sister. Shukran, Shikran, Sister, Salaamu Alaikum, Ya Salaamu Alaikum. Anna Fatima. Alas, kallim ya Fatima. Give her the microphone. بصراحة أنا بحس في هاي الأيام اللي مرت إنه يعني نحنا هلا بموقف أمانة والأمانة صح هي تكليف بس هي تشريف كمان يعني شيء صعب كتير بس هو تشريف من رب العالمين إنه حطنا بهذا المكان إنه نخدم عباده فالحمد لله رب العالمين والله يقدرنا نقدي الأمانة على أحسن وجه Sister Fatima saying that we are being given the responsibility as amana as amana amana is responsibility and honor Allah will never choose somebody who is not suitable to carry his mission and to fulfill his mission he always choosing and picking the right people. The best of his people were the messengers of Allah, mm -hmm. the prophets of Allah. Then the people like you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah ibadan ikhtasahum. Allah has chosen the special group of people in this room to support and help people. That's what Sister Fatima was talking about. Brother Amr. تمام ماشي بسم الله أنا يعني يمكن النقطة الوحيدة حابب أسأل حضرتك فيها الاستعداد للطوارئ دائما من الحاجات اللي فيها تقصير كبير من المؤسسات واللي دائما بيحصل فيه كلام إن دائما محتاجين يبقى عندنا استعداد للطوارئ ولكن للأسف دوت شيء بيكون محبط للغاية في أي استجابة كبيرة رغم إن الفرص موجودة الأموال المفروض إنها تكون موجودة لل... لأن في الآخر وقت الطوارئ بيتم ضخ أموال بشكل كبير ولكن إذا ضخت في وقت مبكر فبنحس هم بالإحباط و... ولما بنيجي نتكلم عن مؤسسات مثلا زي إسلامك ريليف المؤسسات العربية والإسلامية ما بحسش إن في أي تقد يعني أنا خبرتي قصيرة طبعا في المجال بس طول الفترة دي دائما الناس بتحكي عن الاستعداد للطوارئ بس ما فيش استعداد للطوارئ طيب brother I'm I'm talking about preparedness for disaster. We always talk about it, but every time we found that we are facing the disaster without being prepared. Here is the proper planning of the strategic reserve that you have. Here that we need to educate our donors. We don't have to buy the goods and store it. But at least we have the fund and the agreement with the manufacturing companies to produce tents or to give us a tent supply years beforehand, the medicine years beforehand. This is what we call the strategic thinking of having a strategic reserve in in kind as well as cash, as well as human resources. Who are our human resource uh, people in the data? Whether they are rescue individuals, whether they are emergency doctors, whether they are workers or helpers or volunteers, you can deploy them. 
Yesterday I received a message from one of the volunteers, Syrian living in Jordan. She has a group here with 500 volunteers in Turkey. They want me to give them to Islamic Relief. I said this is the wrong time. Because they are making an initiative, collecting money, raising funds, and, and, and all the... I said the best thing to do, let them to excel in the response, change the initiatives into organization, and in the future, there'll be a good organization. So the data you have is a strategic reserve. The vision you have and the accumulated experience in the filing in the archive is a strategic reserve. We have been to many, many disasters. I was Kashmir. You remember Kashmir? I was saying yesterday on the Jazeera in the evening, in Kashmir disaster in 2005, okay? You know Tony Blair? Uh, sorry, uh, George Bush, the, the son, said donate hundred 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 thousand dollars. Tony Blair, make it bigger, hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> Islamic Relief was two million pounds. This is the time of Wasim uh, Yaqub. BBC called us. Why two million pounds? I said, and the, the, the president and the prime minister said 100, 100. I said, because those people never been to the mountains of Kashmir. The mountains of Kashmir had got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of villages. If the earthquake shaken the mountain, thousands of people would die. At the end of the day, we were right, and they were wrong. More than 73,000 people were killed in this disaster. And our organization was a champion, partnering with the military to what we know what? To get the heavy equipment, machinery, to clean up the roads to the mountain from the snow. You remember this? This is it. But we, should, we need strategically to archive this. And this is where you need, as uh, uh, His Excellency was telling me before, who is sitting behind and looking, archiving, writing, directing, strategizing, while we are very, very busy on the ground. Muhammad, isn't it? When did you arrive here? Tuesday. Tuesday. I don't know how many hours he's been sleeping every day since he came, and how many meetings he's having every day. But who is thinking for him while he is actually burned down? If there is nobody thinking for him, sitting back and giving him the vision, that's where we found the mistake. Muslims and non-Muslim donors, during the, they do only donate, donate during disasters. Yeah. When the camera disappeared, the image disappeared, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. They also They disappeared. I, I, add, I add one thing, it's a very small thing. I think prepare, uh, preparedness for disasters is an important issue for NGOs, but no one can do it himself. No one organization can do that. This is where we have, we have to apply real, a real partnership between organizations, and we should prepare for that since a long time. Because uh, no one can do everything. It's, it's, it's a huge issue. You know, uh, work on the ground, preparing, uh, contacting the... Uh, the donors uh, and, and, and so forth. So it's better if a group of organizations they join efforts together and they start a, 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 a large scale of uh, partnership. I think they can do things better. You know, armies are doing that now. Armies from time to time, we say that army they have a joint uh, training mission just to know how they they can fight together. They, they, they have different armies. How to do together? I think we have we have to do that as organizations. And gradually come to it, but I think no one can do it uh, as no. one organization, despite all the, the means that we have. Thank you. Bismillah. So it's really interesting what you say in terms of disaster preparedness. This is something which it's something often talked about, and it tends to happen, unfortunately, during an emergency. People think, if only, if only, if only. The, the challenge we often face is that getting the funding, like you said, when it's in the media, raising money is easy but when it's not in the media. And what we've tried to do in some countries is, one of the things we're trying to move towards is within our sector, you know when Dr. Hani, when he started the organization many, many years ago, 
It was mainly focused on direct implementation. That was the focus. It was about time. having your team on the ground. And in many of the countries that we work in, it was often easier to send your own people. Why? Because when the institutions, when the governments, when the banks ask you, who, how are you doing this, when you can say, my person, my staff is on the ground, it gives them confidence. Mm. But the sector, since 2004, in fact, in this very city, in Istanbul in 2015, when they had the, the World Humanitarian Summit... 16, uh, 15. Yeah, 15. Six, yeah, 15, yeah, in, this very, in Istanbul, in this very city. There was a commitment that was made. Many governments, institutions, and organizations like Islamic Relief that we are going to move away from this. And what we've been trying to do in some countries, Nigeria, um, DRC, uh, Madagascar, Mozambique, these are countries where we do not have presence. But we know these are disaster-prone countries. Yes, yes. Something is going to happen. We don't know when. So what we have tried to do is identify organizations, grassroots organizations, yes. that have, like you said, they have, the, they have the knowledge, they understand the language, they understand the culture, they know the problem, and they know the solution. Yes. What they don't have is the means. So our role is to work with them, we give them a small grant. We give them a small grant, and, that grant, and we know, before we give them the grant, we sit down with them. And we said, okay, what do you want to do? Some organizations may say, we're happy with where we are. Thank you very much. One person operation. But some organizations may say, no, we want to get funding from ECHO. We want to get funding from... Uh, so then we sit with them and he said, but in order to do that, these are the systems you will need to have in place. Here is a grant to have your own governance group, have some training done, this, this, this. So those organizations not only will Islamic Relief benefit from them, but they will also benefit be a contributor towards the sector. But this is very, as I said, it's really difficult to raise money for this. But alhamdulillah, our colleagues in USA, alhamdulillah, they, they, they provided us with some funding. Yeah. So jazakallah khair. And can I also say before we end, I think your first point was very important. Often people, when they talk about the front people, responders, they think it's the people on the front line. Alhamdulillah, our, our country director from, he is you know, leading from the front. But every single contribution counts. That's right. Every single contribution, no matter how small. You know, it's like a, when you open a watch and there are different cogs in that watch, the smallest cog, if that is broken, the whole system will not collapse. And through working like this, there is something else which is baraka, yeah. which is undefined. You cannot put a value on it. But this requires people to work together with the right intention with the right meal, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put baraka in your work. And I've traveled with Dr. Hani, and I have seen that in action. I've seen then that when in action. We, both of us were dying. <laughs> you can. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the people there. Tell them, tell them. So, we are flying in a small plane. I think maybe the plane is no wider than this table. Yeah. Maybe no, it's called a Cessna caravan. It's, it's made for, it was made for, I think, DHL2 for parcels. Yes. It's a very small plane with one engine. And we are flying over the Nafusa Mountains over Sudan. And you look down and it's beautiful. It's green, lush green forest. Forest, it's beautiful. It's area, it's area. And then soon we hit a thunderstorm. Okay, and this plane is doing this. <laughs> like this, like this, like this. There are people behind us who are nausea. They're throwing up. You know, throwing up because it's really bad. And Dr. Hani is sitting there and he says to me, take out the camera, film this. And I said, Dr. Hani, I think we're going to die now. <laughs> I never told this story to anyone. Not my family, but uh, Dr. Hani has been here. It was for nearly for an hour. For an hour. Oh. Yeah. And you can see the swamps. Yeah. And you know, you look down and you know if anything happens, you want to go to the rescue. What are you going to find? Yeah. But alhamdulillah, you know, uh, yeah, it was not written. Alhamdulillah, we got through it. And this is something I think we need to remember. Sometimes people are scared. Like when I was coming here, people say, oh, it looks really bad. I said, look, if it's written, it's written. But inshallah, we should do it. Look, and sometimes you can die at home. You, you right, don't know. Right. You can die at home. Like, like Hazrat Khalid Nalid. He yes. fought many battles. 
Then how many wounds in his scars, of wounds in his in his back, in his arm, everywhere? And he died at home. Yeah. He died at home. And that's it. Because he was actually safe for Allah and Masood. There is a sword of Allah. But he died at home. That was any last question or comment from you before we go, inshallah. And let you go to be with your family and to call you in the evening again. Huh? No, no, no. Huh? Continue your work while you are sleeping. But he said one one day, uh, you know Lutfi. Yes. You know, uh, when, when someone that we know him, he will die and you get rid of him, put him in his grave, he will have his telephone with him. <laughs> Sending messages to me. <laughs> he can't stop, like you. <laughs> Just die and give his telephone. <laughs> Any other questions from your sister, brothers? Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your words of wisdom. And um, we well, thank Allah for bringing him today. Of course, of course. It is unplanned. Unplanned. And, and, and as you said, it was written for us the day we were born that we were going to meet here. So this is from the to you. So Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Finish me. No, no, I'm the new one. Ahtan. Muhammad, uh, end, end the story, end the recording.